everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Janet, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're one of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for being here, and welcome back to my channel. In yesterday's video, I had made a mini garlic uh, protein sparing modified fast bread. So today I thought that I would do a big loaf and today's my keto day and all I can think about is adding cheese to that and just having it all melty and cheesy and garlic. So today I am going to be making a garlic bread loaf. So let's get started on our garlic bread. All right, so I have my mixer all ready here. So I'm just going to put that in and assemble that. And then I'm also going to give my pan a quick spray. This is what I've been using for my loaves. Um, I have made the pizza pull away bread and I have made the monkey pull away bread and this worked phenomenal for those. So that's why I'm going to be using it once again. So I just take a glass nine by nine pan, spray a little bit of olive oil on that and then just give it like a quick brush and then what I'm going to do is then I put my parchment paper over top and the olive oil just gets it to stick a little bit better to the pan because you know we all know we fight with this parchment paper. So I found that a little trick um, to definitely make it a little bit easier in the process. So we're just going to kind of mold that to our pan because then we are going to lift this out and get it all ready after it's done. So I'm just gonna brush the rest, the remaining um, oil that I have on my, my brush just to the bottom. And we are just going to set that aside for now. You guys know that I have been addicted to this recent recipe that I have found from the Ketogenic Woman. I will always have her channel linked down below when I mention this bread recipe that I use, but it is my favorite i've said it before in recipes but it works for savory breads it works for um sweet breads it works for absolutely anything so i absolutely love this love this recipe it's moist it doesn't get dry it tastes like real bread so there's tons of recipes out there right now but you guys find the one that you like this is the one that i have found that i really really like i think maybe everybody's kind of taste buds are different so this takes a cup of egg whites. Now I use the carton egg whites. Feel free to use fresh eggs, but we do have um, chickens. So we do get fresh farm eggs every day, but I kind of like to cherish those and actually have like a nice, like, you know, um, fried egg or poached egg with my farm fresh eggs. So that's why I always use the egg white carton. I get these from Costco. These have always worked for me. I've never made my bread actually with anything else except for these carton egg whites. And then we are going to add some cream of tartar. I have the recipe linked down below for you guys. So make sure that you check it out. But um, this recipe is so, so good. All right. So that is it for that. And then what we are going to do is we are going to mix that on high. Oh, we are gonna mix that on high until we get some ste Actually, you know what? No, we're not gonna do that. Cause you know what, with this recipe, we can mix it all together, bonus. Okay, so let's carry on with our ingredients then. We are going to use a third of a cup of the egg white protein powder. So I like it that it uses a little bit less protein powder because I find that when I was making it with a full cup or even a half a cup, I don't know, it just was really, really dry. So we are just gonna throw that right in the container. We are going to add some xanthan gum as well too. I think I almost have this recipe memorized actually. So that's impressive. Hopefully I do. <laughs> And then we are just going to use, um, I, this is the addition that I make to this bread and I add some active yeast. So we are just going to add a little bit of that, a quarter of a teaspoon. I just kind of eyeball it. Honestly, like rarely do I measure this. I just kind of pour it in, but 
I feel like it kind of gives some good flavor to the bread. And we are gonna add a teaspoon of the Swerve's sugar. So some recipes actually call for more of the confectionery sugar, which I'm not exactly sure why, to be honest, because um, I don't know, like some recipes I've seen use like up to a half a quarter of a cup. So maybe that's for like some sweeter breads, but honestly, like you don't need very much. And that stuff, like, I don't know about in the US, but here in Canada, it's hella expensive. So um, same with the egg white protein powder. It is expensive here in Canada, unfortunately. Um, I found one of my subscribers actually had mentioned they they're from Canada and they had found a new website. So I'm going to have a look at that. I will have it on the screen. I can't remember it off the top of my head and maybe I will even link it in the description, but that is where I am going to be getting my next um, batch of egg white powder. All right, we also need a dash of pink Himalayan salt. And that is it. Now we are going to mix all of this until we get, it won't create stiff peaks, but it definitely will create some soft ones. So that's what you want to look for. I would say it's probably about six minutes that I do this. While that is mixing up, make sure you preheat your oven to 325. I This is all done and this is kind of like the texture that you'll get um, it's kind of in between like soft and steep stiff yeah steep stiff peaks um, and as long as it's all mixed together it's not gonna make a huge difference so we are just gonna put this all in our 9 by 9 pan and kind of what I like to do is kind of put half in and then just spread it around just so that there is no like air pockets in the bread and it turns out really really nice so i just like to spread that around so have any of you made the pull away pizza bread or my monkey bread at all I know there's a few of you that have commented that have tried it and absolutely love it. So I love hearing that. Um, I'm trying to have some new recipes for you in the upcoming weeks. I just need to get a few ingredients and some, some of those ingredients are hard to find. So, but I will definitely keep you posted. But this bread is kind of a game changer for a lot of us. I know even for myself, like I try to limit it and, and I do try to get my protein from other sources like I have mentioned. I don't just want to be eating bread all day long. Don't get me wrong, I definitely probably could, especially when it comes to the pull away pizza bread or the monkey bread. Um, I, it's so, so good. But um, I do try to just have it with something else. But um, on even on my keto days, like with what I'm making today is gonna be perfect for a keto day. So um, get that cheese goodness. And the good thing is that this bread is like so low in calories that it makes it for like a good meal. You know what I mean? And it fills you up because of the protein. So I am liking it. All right, there, that is that. So we are just gonna wait a couple minutes. My oven just quite isn't preheated yet. So we will put this in a 325 oven for 30 minutes. Okay, and while that is cooking, I am going to actually shred up some cheese. I'm going to use marble cheese today, but feel free to use some like pizza, mozzarella, or anything that you have on hand. I, you guys, if you've been here for a long time, you know that I always get marble cheese. It's just my favorite kind of cheese. So I'm just going to shred this up. I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to use. Um, it's either gonna be a half a cup or a cup, but I'm gonna kind of play it by ear because I, 
I definitely want cheese. It's my keto day, so I'm just gonna shred this up. All right, so I have weighed out, this is 60 grams of shredded cheese, which works out to be about a cup. So I'm gonna have that ready, and then I'm also going to measure out a quarter of a cup of melted butter. So I'm just going to, this is just um, a brand in Canada. It's a no name brand. And I always get the unsalted because I like to add my own like pink Himalayan salt. So I am just going to unwrap this a little bit and then we are going to measure out a quarter of a cup. I'm just honestly, I'm just going to slice it and then put it in my measuring cup and then put it in the microwave and then we'll go from there. All right, so I'm pretty sure that'll be a quarter of a cup, but I will just keep this aside in case I need to add any more out when it comes out of the microwave. While my bread is still cooking, I still have about 10 more minutes in there, and then you do leave it in the oven with the oven turned off for another 10 minutes after the 30 minutes at 325, okay? So um, I still have a little bit until that is done, but I figured out the macros for this whole entire loaf all together. Okay, so let me show you. I'm actually going to show you my piece of paper that I have it all written down. It's kind of easier to see it visually rather than me talking in to a camera. One sec. All right, I'm sorry if you can't see it. I used a green pen. <laughs> it was just what I had handy. So for the bread, this is for the whole entire loaf, okay? So for the bread, it's 180 calories, zero fat, seven carbs, 60 protein. Now, my carbs, I figured mine out exactly as far as like my recipe that I made. So this is my exact macros. So you can see my carb count um, comes from the egg white powder. Remember, this is for the whole entire thing, okay? 0.5 comes from the nutritional yeast. I have two carbs in my xanthan gum. I have three carbs in my egg whites. This is for the whole entire loaf. I was wanting to make, it was exact macros. I figured out absolutely everything that I put in my bread. And then I usually cut up my bread into 12 slices. And then this is the macros per slice that I have. This is mine off of the recipe that I literally just made for you guys. So if you are wondering where those seven carbs come from, that is it. Make sure you're checking. Every brand is different. I live in Canada, so you know what I mean. Things are just different as far as macros. The cheese that I used is from Costco for 60 grams, 240 calories, 20 grams of fat, zero carbs, 14 grams of protein. For a quarter of the cup of butter that I'm using, which is a no-name brand here in Canada, it is 400 calories, 44 fat, zero carb, zero protein. For the garlic pull away, pull apart bread that I made for the whole entire loaf is 820 calories, 64 grams of fat, seven carbs, 74 protein. So that is not bad. Like I consider these loaves pretty big. Um, like I think I would probably eat like a quarter of it, but I just wanted to let you know the macros for the whole entire loaf. Um, and then you can decide how many servings that you want to have, whether it's maybe two servings or if you want to add and um, some of my pepperoni, you know, and make it the pizza. And you know what I mean? It, it's going to vary, but I just wanted to let you guys know because I do get a lot of questions with what I'm making, with the recipes I come up with as far as how many macros are in it. And the whole thing is, is that it's going to be different for everyone. So please understand that it's, the macros are gonna be different for everybody. Everybody is making their bread differently. I make mine exactly the same every time that I make it so that I know my macros, what I'm getting per slice. Um, you know, if I divide this into fours, I know what I'm getting per serving. Right now I'm keeping meticulously track of my macros right now because I'm feeling so good and I still have a few pounds left that I have to lose till I get back to my goal weight and I'm getting there and having these sort of options just makes it so much easier, especially when I'm consistent with my bread. As long as I know my bread macros, I can kind of figure out everything that I'm putting into that bread, whether I'm doing the monkey bread, the pizza bread, the garlic bread, whatever. I can just figure out the additives that I'm putting in there to figure out the macros. So I hope this helps you a little bit to figure out your macros and hopefully it fits in your keto day. Um, definitely, I would say this won't work 
for a protein sparing modified fast day. Um, the only way it would work is if you cut down on the butter and I feel like if you cut down on the butter, it's not gonna be as good. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I'm keto, I love my butter, I love all my fats. It just makes me appreciate, like I said, the high protein days that I have. Make me appreciate my keto days because then I can have all the high fat goodness that I like, the pepperoni, the butter, the sausage, all of the good things, the hamburgers. So anyways, we will get back to you and I will let you know what I'm going to be doing next once the bread comes out of the oven. All right, so this is it straight out of the oven. I just took it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to just lift the parchment paper out of the nine by nine pan and put it onto a cookie sheet. Okay, so what we are going to do next is we are going to preset our oven again, um, back up to 325, so I've already done that. We are going to cut the bread into a grid like I've done before, only cutting about halfway through, so let's do that. Now that that is done, what we are going to do is we are going to melt our butter. All right, so there we go. That is a quarter of a cup of butter, almost exactly, so that's perfect. We're gonna make sure that all the butter is melted in our little cup here, and then what we are going to add is we are going to add a teaspoon of garlic. I have minced garlic here. I think that's almost all I have left. I love garlic, so I use it for a lot of things. So I'll have to get, uh, I'll have to get a refill. And we are going to do a teaspoon of the Italian dressing. So I just get mine from Costco. Italian dressing and a teaspoon. This measuring spoon is a half a teaspoon, hence why I'm using two. And then we are going to also use a half of a teaspoon of parsley. Okay, and then we're gonna give that a good stir. And then what we're going to do on our bread is we are actually going to pour half of the mixture onto the bread and then we are going to stuff it with cheese. So we're just going to try to get it in the creases where you've cut, give it some more flavor through there. Perfect, and then what we are going to do is we are going to take our cheese and we are going to stuff the bread. So just like I've done previously, just in between all of the nooks, make sure that you get it in between where you've cut. That's what makes this bread turn out amazing is when you get it right stuffed in there. Tastes delicious. And I definitely think using the um, 60 grams of cheese will be enough, so that's good. So you're gonna wanna use all the cheese that we have here by stuffing it. Obviously some is going to, like you can see, it's popping out, which is gonna be perfect. You won't need to add any more on the top. All right, that looks pretty darn amazing already. <laughs> All right, and then what we are going to do is we are going to put the rest of our butter mixture on the top. All right, and then I don't like things too, too spicy, but I thought this would be a good addition to just put a few jalapeno slices on top. Now, if you don't like spice, you can definitely leave this out, but I just thought it would be kind of nice just for a little bit, maybe a flavor. And there we have it, you guys. All right, so we are gonna put this back in the oven for about 10 minutes. And actually what we're gonna do with it so what we are going to do next is I'm going to actually cover this with tin foil, put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes, and then you're gonna to wanna to take off the tin foil and then bake it uncovered for another five, 10 minutes until all the cheese is completely golden brown and nicely melted. 
All right, and this is it straight out of the oven. Oh my gosh, it's, and it smells like real garlic bread. Honest to God, if you guys wanted to add more garlic, feel free. I probably would have if I had some more um, minced garlic, but um, you definitely want the garlic to stand out since it is um, cheese garlic bread, but this is the final product, you guys. So I'm gonna let it cool off for a little bit and then we will give it a taste test. to work this morning so I literally have to leave here in like five minutes but I have taken it apart it is so much cheesy goodness you guys and it is done perfectly mm. <laughs> this is so good this tastes like legit real cheesy garlic bread that I would order in a restaurant Mm. All right, so the problem with this is that it's so good that I don't know. I'm taking some to work today, so at least I'll be able, I won't be at home. I think I'm going to take a quarter of it with me to work and figure out the macros, but this is really, really good. This is good as a side dish as well. If you wanted to, you could probably um, just make this a flat bread as well. Put all of your butter and cheese right on the top. You don't have to make it as a pull away bread. You can just have it as cheese garlic toast. Amazing, you guys, this, I love playing around with this bread. I get so many ideas on things that I miss, you know, by being on keto, but regular bread makes my stomach hurt. So I have IBS and bread, potatoes, pasta, pasta's huge. They make me physically sick. Like I am in the fetal position in pain. So when I can find recipes to kind of substitute bread recipes like I have here with the cheesy garlic bread, I love cheesy garlic bread. Like it is one thing when we go out and you get a steak sandwich and that garlic toast comes automatically with it. It takes all of my bean to take it, get them to take it back because Jimmy's not a big garlic toast fan. And so before I would eat mine and I would eat his, but now I have to send them back. Like I don't even eat them and it goes straight to the garbage. And that's a tough one for me, but this you guys is definitely a good substitute. So make sure you give it a try, you guys. It is delicious. So make sure you try this recipe for the cheesy garlic bread, you guys. It is absolutely amazing. It can even be used as a side dish on your keto days if you're having maybe a steak and salad. This would be a perfect side dish for that as well too. So let me know down below if you have tried any of my pull away breads. Like I said, Anita from the Ketogenic Woman is kind of one that inspired me to start all of these. So thank you so much, Anita. She is a fellow Canadian, so make sure that you subscribe to her channel as well. And also make sure that you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.